Most people in life are looking at how to make a life worth living and a retirement having. When I do these audio casts, I'm actually talking about what's happening during my living. I'm talking about what happens when people lie, steal, and cheat people out of the right to privacy. That the right to privacy is abused by parents, siblings, relatives, and police officers, and local people who ill-willed themselves into a person's life and abused privacy records. What I can tell you is when I make people curious with that, what I'm talking about and its exact detail and contents are none of your business. But what I can tell you is that the abuse that has come out of that is off charts and out of control ridiculous. What I can tell you is that I bought six bottles of water last night and as I wake up and I look in my cooler, they're not there anymore. Someone stole them. I also found things out of my pockets, particularly half of my beverages that I bought in lemonade are gone. And I don't really appreciate that. I am a man in struggle. I am a man who works hard to talk to people and to network with people. And I produce a very small and completely modest income with the help of the Lord. Because generous and kind people do sometimes help me. But at the same time, there are people who like to practice from law enforcement financial abuse. And the financial abuse is, I'm going to give you a little bit of funds. I'm going to tell you, God bless you when I leave you. But in the night when you sleep, I'm going to cut your beard and I'm going to abuse your body. And that's what men who are white, black, and otherwise do. In life, we have moments of time to speak our outrage. When Jesus was alone in the temples or in front of the Pharisees, he was outraged as how they were collecting taxes in the house of the Lord. What I can tell you is that the abusers and psychological abusers of social networks do this. And when people are unwilling to be cordial, unwilling to be kind, unwilling to repair relationships, God is not served. It's very possible that at my stage of life, in my age of life, and my personal grooming at this second in life, I'm not the most attractive. But what I want to have happen is the woman that I love to see my heart, see my mind, see my soul, and hear the Lord speaking through me as an oracle of old. But a lot of people look up the word oracle and all they find is a bunch of girly shit about how there was some oracle of some temple somewhere during a, some sort of archdiocese arch thing, and I don't even understand half of it. The reality is that most of the Christ's house, most of historic works on, and anthropological things of the great works of our Lord have been so totally abused by interpreters who don't handle exegesis well and don't handle other conventions of interpretation well. If you want to know the house of the Lord, then come up, say to me, I would very much like a reading for me and my family, and I will provide you the what God gifts to me about what I hear, what I see, and what I think. It's not exactly a mentalist, but I do have the ability to immediately assess what your profession is and isn't based on what you say and reality. So please don't lie to me. It doesn't go well for you in front of God. He is not pleased when you dishonor his angels and when you dishonor the Holy Ghost of God. In life, we have moments of time to wake in the morning and thank the Lord that we're alive. At that time, you should be thanking God for everything that you have and everything that you hope to bring into your life. At the end of the day, you should be thanking God for the 10 or 12 items that went really great for you, your family, your children, your business, and your friends. But in life, when you don't take the time to pray at the beginning of the day, at the end of the day, like bookends, you have failed your life and your work with Christ is probably not going well. In life, we have moments of time to speak the truth about God. And God is a very jealous God. God is a very vengeful God. And God has delivered and did choose to deliver COVID to the Indianapolis area. And that was something that I actually prophesied in myself, something I said and I didn't remember about until much later, long after the panhandler Bob told me about the illness that was coming across America. And frankly, at the beginning of it, I didn't believe it. And then I realized it was coming true. But what I can tell you, in our life we have the right to privacy, we have the right to privilege, which means I have the right to work and do the things I need to do to have food on my table, a roof over my head, and the ability to serve my community in the way that the Lord God proved, proves my head worthy of. In life we have moments of time to talk about the truth, and the truth is that when I hear don't stop, then I have to keep going. And channeling for God can be sometimes difficult because I never know what the angel of the Lord might choose to say through me to you today. 
What I can say to you is that prophets do exist. Psychologists might too persist. But the reality is that God hates the mental health industry is something that I get a consistent message about. And it's not my sole opinion. It's who decides to go into it. It will be my opinion or what God immediately and prophetically and passionately and powerfully constantly persists to say all the time, which is how I know when a message is really accurate with the consistency of the message that he's very angry at the mental health world today and we need to abolish the entire study of it. It needs to become a standard class in a high school about psychology and about codependency and relationships. We need to use the world's best authors who understand these things like Melanie Beatty to teach our kids how to avoid the classic missteps of partnering in life with the wrong people.